the rolling plains of Sauk Center, Minnesota, became the launching pad of the most popular American writer of the jazz age, Sinclair Lewis. In 1920, America was rocked by the publication of Main Street, a satirical novel ridiculing middle-class values and American smugness. He was called the conscience of his generation, and his novels, which horrified the literary and political establishments, went on to become required reading in English classes for decades. Sinclair Lewis was the first American to receive the Nobel Prize. Some people feel, because Europe disliked America, and here was a guy who was making fun of America. What's the matter? You wanted for murder? Worse than that. Worse than murder? It's a woman. <laughs> he is the most noted Minnesota writer, certainly the, the, one of the most noted American writers, the first Nobel Prize winner, and, and for a while, probably the most popular writer in this, in this country, in the early part of the 20th century, anyway. He's essentially a storyteller, and a very good storyteller. In the early part of the 20th century, everyone knew who Sinclair Lewis was because he wrote so eloquently about what was going on in American society at the time. The rising middle class, American culture, all of the foibles. He was truly, I think, a visionary. <laughs> all, all right, then. I always say business is business. That's the American way. Now, you boys. Oh, he had his finger on the pulse of the culture. He knew everything that was going on, mostly to satirize it, but, but also to, uh, you know, people liked reading about, you know, what was going on. And Lewis certainly knew what was going on in this country. When I told my pals I was coming to Jesus, they left. Well, my favorite book is Elmer Gantry, and I, I just love the book. Maybe it's because of the movie with Burt Lancaster. I'm going to give you all the hell in the Bible, and if you don't like it, you better fix it up with the Lord, because the Lord put it there. For me, it was the historical reference, the, the impact of, of, of the evangelists of the time, like Amy Semple McPherson. Who is this, uh, this Elmer Gantry? And the fact that he looked at that movement and found the human side to it. The fact that these religious reformers, like years later, the televangelists, had feet of clay. In 1917, Mr. Gantry was expelled from a theological seminary in Kansas for seducing the deacon's daughter in the church where he had that day delivered a Christmas sermon. Babbitt, the same thing. And when the city buys a property, they got to buy it from us. Well, that doesn't sound exactly honest. I don't see why women can't understand the simplest business deal. Uh, Babbitt, which I take as truly a visionary work. Lewis looking at what was happening to American culture because of the automobile. Your wife wouldn't grudge me our friendship. Well, that would be too mean. Well, women are funny that way. Sometimes you know, what effect cars would have, what effect mass culture would have on this country. I think that in, the, in 1922, when Babbitt was published, uh, Sinclair Lewis really saw far into the future the effects of, of, of this new invention, and not just the car, but the radio, the phonograph, and everything else that was happening in that age to, to so transform it from, uh, from what was essentially the Victorian era up, you know, pushing up until the First World War. Certainly the book that all Minnesota school children read for many years was Main Street, and it remains his, his, his most famous and well-known book. And, and that was an attack on the provincialism of small town America, especially small town Minnesota. Then you think as they do. Oh, no, darling, don't get me wrong. See, they're rather a conservative crowd. They're swell people, but just don't ever give him a chance to criticize you. Sauk Center, his hometown where he grew up, which he called in his writing, Gopher Prairie. Uh, the narrow-mindedness of the people, the, uh, the, the total boredom <laughs> of living in a place like that, the way that all culture seemed reduced to the lowest possible common denominator. All those things uh, were, were certainly present in that book. Well, I guess it's you they resent. 
For what reason? Say, plenty of them. In the first place, you grabbed off the best bachelor in town. In the second place, you're a stranger, and they were just waiting for something to crack down on. And <laughs> did you lead with your chin? <laughs> Sinclair Lewis was, for a while, the, one of the best known writers in this country and one of the most popular. Uh, his satire, especially, was what uh, gave him stature. Don't you believe in goodness and decency? Holding people together? No. No, I only believe in love. I think a great deal of what he wrote about was tied to the 20s and 30s. This thing just about scares me to death. Every time this toaster jumps, I gets me a new gray hair. I never can understand these newfangled gadgets. When I had to teach Main Street, it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do as a teacher because the students were almost in open rebellion because they just did not like the book because of all of the, the, the getting bogged down in all of this material from the 20s that they didn't understand. Lewis has really f tended to fall out of the canon. Uh, he, he's no longer there with Fitzgerald and Hemingway and, and Faulkner. And my thought of that is simply because he was just too, too limited to the 20s, a great writer of the 20s, but still unable to transcend it in important ways. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008, the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public.